My name is Mahi Muckets. I'm a consultant veteran retinal surgeon at Murfield's Eye Hospital and also work at UCL. We've been running a trial with a company called Signs Corporation in the US, formerly Pixium Vision, for a new electronic device that was aimed at partially restoring vision in patients with dry age-related macular degeneration and geographic atrophy. People with advanced geographic atrophy, currently there's no treatments available when they're completely blind. So this device was aimed at restoring um, uh, part of their central vision. So we just completed a European clinical trial and are reporting our primary endpoint results. So I implanted five patients at Murfields, um, all successfully implanted. Um, and across the trials, so it's five countries across Europe. So 38 patients in total were successfully implanted during the trial. So the device is called Prima. It's a photovoltaic electronic retinal chip that's wireless. This is a European pivotal trial. So it's a device trial similar to a phase three drug trial. And the headline results was that the trial met its primary endpoint, which was demonstrating a significant improvement in visual acuity. And we found that about 84% of patients were able to read letters, numbers, words, sentences, and around 80% of patients were actually able to read uh, between four and five lines on an ETRS vision chart. So the prosthetic vision was significantly improved and meaningful. To explain it to people, I had like two black discs in both eyes. And I tried to see around the outside and it was all distorted. It was really bad. It was quite amazing because it's all new to me. It's a new way of looking through your eyes, you know. And of course, it was dead exciting when I seen a, a letter and that. Oh my gosh. And that the support, like I said, with Dream team, they go, oh, that's it. And you do, you know, I was doing it like this, fast as they were giving me letters, and I was doing it quick as light then, and I, I was getting excited. It's a bit like a small SIM card, it's two by two millimeters. It's wireless, it's very, very thin, so it's about 30 microns. If you imagine a human hair, is half the thickness of a human hair. The device is part of a, a platform. So the device is implanted into the, the macula. After it's implanted, the patients have a pair of glasses, which have a video camera. Uh, linked to a pocket computer. So the patient, after being implanted, um, after a month or two, start operating the device. The glasses over the implanted eye have a video camera, and that captures the visual scene. That's then projected uh, into the glasses, and then infrared light um, transfers that data, that stimuli, into the pocket processor. So initially you see sort of phosphenes, which are lights, perceptions, that's then modified, re refined, they have contrast, brightness into a meaningful signal. Um, and then in our patient groups across the trial, that signal was actual resolution of letters and numbers, so object resolution was achieved. So the whole system, when it works, um, the visual projector to the chip is simultaneously, and then it goes to the visual cortex, and then the patients actually can see with training um, actual objects, which is pretty spectacular. I can't put it into words. It's just amazing, isn't it? So the operation itself is a vitrectomy operation where you, uh, I did my patients with local anesthesia and some sedation to relax them. We freeze the eye, we remove the jelly, uh, and the macula has to be lifted um, and a small trap door created. And then a special device has been designed to allow the chip to be implanted under the macula, and then a surgical technique is then deployed to move the actual chip to the optimal location. We then put gas or siliconol, so my patients all had gas, which dissolved after a couple of weeks, and they're just on regular eye drops afterwards, and usually the eye is fully settled by about three or four weeks. Um, so the operation takes about two hours. It's an operation that all vitreoretinal surgeons are trained to do, and the specific implantation technique we just undergo a short training program in order that we're all um, <clears throat> able to do that competently. Um, and that's now been scaled up across multiple surgeons, which demonstrates that it is feasible for a wide variety of surgeons to carry out the actual operation. When you have geographic atrophy, you lose the RP and photoreceptors, so they're not there, but you have the inner retina. So the chip is implanted into the subretinal space, so the neural retina at the bottom. So it replaces the photoreceptor layer. So it still it integrates in the, with the remaining inner retina. So it's just sitting at the bottom of the retina. And as it's charged up, the signals will pass up through the inner retina. Um, and because the signals are very 
localized, um, that's one of the key features of this device. And this is perhaps why it is worked successfully compared to previous devices. So in previous devices, the signals were very uh, confused. They're overlapping. So the signals that went down the ganglion cells, the optic nerve, were not meaningful. But this one is a bit more targeted, a bit more localized. So when the, sig when the, the chip fires up, sends the signals down the retina, there's less overlap and sort of um, <clears throat> cross communications. So you get a more meaningful signal going to the visual cortex. The way it works, if you think about a solar panel on the roof of your house or in a field, the device itself has 378 pixels. So each pixel is what's called a photovoltaic cell. So as the light from the, the, the projected image gets converted to infrared light, the infrared light fires up the chip. So each photovoltaic cell gets activated. That then con converts the stimuli into electrical energy. And within the retina, those electrical signals pass through the residual inner retina. They then pass down the ganglion cells, down the optic nerve, the visual cortex. Um, so that's how it kind of works. It's not activated without the glasses. And once the glasses are on, it becomes activated, it's charged up. Um, and all the previous work, the pre-human work, demonstrated that they essentially work like electronic photoreceptors. All of the electrophysiology responses, so the what's called on-off responses, the effects in the amacrine cells, the bipolar cells, all of these things were very close to the human natural electrophysiology. Another thing which is quite key is that what we find, one of the studies coming out from Stanford demonstrated that patients can actually integrate their prosthetic vision with their peripheral vision. So what they see centrally, they can still use their peripheral vision in the far periphery and it integrates quite naturally. So um, that's better for sort of daily function as well. So that's another unique kind of uh, aspect of this device. So when I speak to my patients in Murfields, I'm all of them are able to recognize letters and words. They can use that. So with the device off, it's all black. With the device on, they can start to recognize things. We did actually notice in the study that, that the patient's performance did actually improve during the study. And one of the hypotheses is there is some brain plasticity in the visual cortex as the brain is being retrained, that their performance improved. It's not easy. Uh, no, it's not simple, but you put the time in, you put the hours in, and it's like anything, like when you're a child, if I think of myself as a child, you, I thought, well, I've never been bright, but I will put the hours in, because my learning seems to be, I pick up a little bit each time, so if I put as much hours as I could possibly do, then I'm going to pick up more, and that's what I did, I just put some, if I woke up at two o'clock in the morning, I'd go downstairs and put the camera on, I just, just kept on with it. I had a love for it, actually. I just made friends with the camera. I thought, well, you've, you've got to be my friend for, for this to work. So now that we have uh, the headline sort of primary endpoints reached, the, the company Science Core in the US will now uh, look to commercialize the device and go for CE marking. Realistically, you're probably looking at probably the future, one to two years or beyond for, for patients in the NHS to be able to access this technology. So it's quite exciting because now we'll be able to see patients in our clinic and when they ask a question, uh, we can offer something that they can reflect on and decide if that's the right um, sort of therapy for them. So the patients that would be the ideal candidates are obviously patients with quite advanced geographic atrophy who have large areas of atrophy. The device is around two millimeters, so it has to be a large area of atrophy. So if you see patients in your practice who are struggling, who still are asking for more, then certainly they should talk about this device that may be coming out in the future um, uh, the operation itself um, is a routine operation that we carry out um, and it has been successful in restoring aspects of central vision. So I think the optometrist should be aware of this. All patients should be aware of this technology coming because currently there isn't anything that can meaningfully restore in these blind patients um, vision. So, so yeah, they should certainly look out for it and, and Murfields will be likely leading on this technology. So we're very happy to take any inquiries. The next question naturally is what other conditions? So um, obviously you have to have patients where it's a macular condition and, and, and the most obvious one in younger patients would be Stargardt's disease because it's a kind of younger version of, of dry AMD. 
and, and patients go blind much earlier in life. So working ages are impacted quite severely. And then obviously retinitis pigmentosa, inherited retinal degenerations, would be another key area where currently there is nothing available. So again, that is an area that, that's been looked at as well.